opening statement. And please do not forget to use your raise hand emojis for any questions. Whenever you're ready, Coach. Yeah. Well, congratulations to Duke on the win. And uh, it was a hard-fought defensive game uh, by both teams. You know, when you look at the statistics, um, they were 0 of 9 on third down. And I think the game came down to us kicking field goals and them scoring a couple more touchdowns than us. We gave them a short field with a turnover in the red zone, which really hurt. I mean, defensively, we played good enough in that game for us to win. And, and we just didn't connect, you know, offensively enough. I heard CJ talking, you know, I mean, he threw some good balls that were dropped. Uh, he threw behind a couple guys. He threw high to a couple guys. And we got to make some play calls in certain situations to help. But collectively, it's not good enough. And, you know, it's a we, us, and ours business. And there isn't any blame other than everybody. It starts with me. You know, disappointing more than anything just for our seniors. Like I've said, I take it really personal to send them out with a win and Thought we prepared well uh, and didn't get it done. You know, Duke has a good defense statistically. They've been really good all year, and they showed that today. And they made it hard on us offensively, and we just weren't able to capitalize when we got the ball across the 20. And every time we got down there, we didn't get touchdowns but once. I'm going to begin with questions. Corey? Yeah, Dave, you mentioned the – uh, struggles in the red zone. Um, we asked CJ about CJ Bailey about it a little bit, but I wanted to ask you as well. What did you see from from Duke that led to those struggles in the red zone? Uh, different different drives. You know, they zero blitzed us in one drive three straight times, and we didn't uh, didn't manage it. it. Didn't do a good job. Um, we had a good play call in one, and one of the receivers slipped. Dakari came out one on one on a guy. We thought we went there, and, and he slipped. Um, other than that, they covered us, they rushed us, they stopped the run, we didn't get it done. You know, we got outplayed in that area of the field, and, and there's nothing magic about it, you know. It's tight windows, and um, they made more plays down there than us, you know, and we didn't finish drives in that area of the field. And so we were able to get down there quite a bit, but they got to finish. I mean, it's not about being 100% scoring if they're all field goals, you know. You got to get some touchdowns and it's execution more than anything. And it's not one thing, you know, there's multiple things that happened. There are a few missed passes by Bailey tonight, but a lot of drops, especially in the second half. Um, what is your assessment of, of, of that impact on the offense as well? Yeah. I mean, it's, we talk about being efficient and what I mean by that is, you know, on first down you get four yards or more whatever the down and distance is on second down, you get half of it and get yourself into manageable third downs. And then you operate on third down over 60%. And when you hit a guy wide open on a, a slant or a square in on first down, it's going to be second and three and it's dropped. It's now second and 10. And so those kind of plays are impactful. You know, they are I mean, no different than when you have a 30 yard run and there's a holding penalty, you know, those are impactful plays that hurt your offense and, um, I thought we had gotten past that kind of stuff. We caught the ball well all year. I mean, this hasn't been an issue. We've had really good um, stretch and catch plays by receivers and tight ends and backs. And so it was frustrating that it happened tonight because that hasn't been something we've done this year. I thought our guys throughout the season have really caught the football well, but that wasn't the case tonight. Thank you. Ethan? Hey, Dave. Earlier this season, you talked about kind of shortening the season into a five-game stretch, and that's how you kind of recalibrated the team's expectations. Going into another bye week here, what's, you know, the key to, you know, yeah. focusing on these last two games and recalibrating expectations again? Yeah, I mean, I said this in the locker room. We have two games left. You know, we have a, a, a short bye because we play on a Thursday the following week, go down to Georgia Tech, and uh, then come home and play a rival. And so – we have two opportunities to finish, and that's what they're going to remember is how they finish, and we need to do a great job one at a time. And obviously it starts with the corrections from this game, getting the guys back in the right frame of mind and getting back to work. Noah. Hey, Coach, you've talked about finishing in the red zone previously or this year. How do you guys try to go about you know fixing that instead of, you know, kind of just settling for field goals when you have to do that. 
Yeah. I mean, if I had the answer for you right now, I'd give it to you, but I need to look at it. Um, I thought we had corrected that coming out of the last buy. We were much better, but today we were really bad down there. And so we can get in the film room with the staff and look at it and see what's happening, how we're getting attacked and what the shortcomings are. But um, it's been a lot better, obviously, than it was tonight. It was it's not as bad as it can get because there's other games this year where we've turned the ball over down there multiple times. So we got points, but you need touchdowns to win a game like that. Colby? From your perspective, what have teams done this year to uh, limit Casey conception? Um, it's been uh, double teams. It's been reroutes with the man over the top. Um at times tonight, it wasn't. It was just they put their best DB on him. And uh, sometimes he covered him really well. Sometimes he didn't. And um, at times we threw the football to him. He had two drops. You know, but most teams have leaned to safety his way, um, which is smart. And, and because of that, you've seen us be able to get the ball to other guys. You know, Justin Jolie has been a benefactor of that. Some of the outside receivers have been a benefactor of that. But there's definitely a – you know, if you watch their game plan in the second half in particular, they took their corner um, that was playing on the outside in the first half and put him on him the entire second half when they were playing man-to-man -man with the safety over the top. And so it's hard when, when that's going to happen. You know, it's really an outside-inside look. And then in zone defense, you have an underneath player with his own player over the top. So there's a lot more tension on him. You know, and last year – uh, really coming out of the bye it became kind of the show and, and people weren't as in tune, you know, and they had the whole offseason to listen to how good a player he is. And obviously they're paying attention. They're doing a good job. They're defending him well. And that's why we've had to spread the ball around. And, you know, it's about players making plays. That's how you win games. Bottom line is we didn't make enough of them. To our final two questions, Stone. Hey, Coach, I was going to ask about the red zone, but I feel like we've kind of already gone over that, so I'll just move on to something else. Um, Duke was held to 0 for 9 on third down. They barely averaged a yard per carry in the running game. You won the turnover battle, time of possession, but ultimately still come away, unfortunately, with a double-digit loss. What else do you think, aside from the red zone stuff, sticks out to you to where you want to really key in and improve uh, in order for you guys to reach that bowl-eligible status in these next two games? Uh, drops and penalties. We had eight penalties, and I don't have the number here. It's not on the stats, but drops and penalties would be the other two things, you know. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.